Good evening. I Rapstein with your financial market wrap up for the weekend edition. And we'll look at the weekly charts. And this is Sunday evening. And we're at the 23rd of October, 2022, 530 p.m. Central Time. I used the weekend to do my outdoor work. Uh, Chicago's in the 70s. It's gorgeous. This is highly unusual. We're going right back into the low 50s uh, within two days and a lot of rain coming our way, which we need. But this was the opportunity to finish everything up. So I took advantage. And then I, I started doing this this morning. And thank God, a transformer in my area blew. My house has been getting these little blackouts. I live right in the city. Why is this? Ask neighbors. They've seen it. Finally, the transformer went. So that probably was the, the reason. It, when it blows, the police come, fire department, ComEd, a whole ordeal for hours. So I just said, I'll wait till we open. So let's talk a little bit. What you had at the end of last week was interesting in the sense that we have different Fed presidents and governors now calling for the meeting in November to open discussion on how they start backing away from high interest rates, period. Now, when will be a big question. The Fed chair has told you when. So while all these people want to be the first guys on the block to own stocks down here, this is not the time yet. Why? Because we don't have the data that says that they should be backing off. Now, maybe they have their hands on the data that you and I haven't seen. I doubt it. I don't think it's been compiled yet, but they need to get to see the CPI and the jobs data. You know, we, we get these small reports tomorrow, we're going to get manufacturing CPI, but it's the overall CPIs that we want to see. When I see those, I'll have an idea what to do. All right. Is it time? I don't think so. I, I think that you're going to get a 75 basis point hike in November. We haven't had any data to say no to that. December has always been open in the air for one reason. We don't know if the CPI is going to show a sign with labor of backing off yet. We'll find out. The commodity markets have been strong, not weak in price. That is something to take into account. And the dollar is just getting itself weak. Remember, this was a market pushing 114 up until they scared the heck out of the markets over the past 72 hours and saying, oh, this could be where the Fed pivots. I want to go on record. This is not where the Fed pivots. This is where discussions on how to do the pivot will take place. There's a huge difference. There should be a game plan. You don't do it at the last minute. What are they going to be looking at? What are they going to agree to to get a game plan in place? Then they can talk about it with all of us. But if you heard one Fed governor say, other than they should prepare for it, that it is time to back off, I have not seen that. I have seen Ms. Daly say, well, she doesn't want to see it overdone. That would be worse than going too far. Uh, okay, okay, okay. That's still not doing what I said. So we'll see what happens. When you look at the S&P, you are up 5.46%. That's what you're up for the month so far. Okay, that's a gain off the lows, but that is the lowest low you just had. So let's not lose sight of where we were with these markets as we were backing off. Because you come in here, you had been down 9% as of September. You've so far made back, including current quotes, 5.46%, but that's still coming off the lowest low. Is that a reason for me to say, hey, let's get friendly? I don't think so. As for the S&P, I can see a bounce coming. I did a report three weeks ago now where I was calling for that. And I said, no, I don't think it'll bottom here. Just go up and keep going through the end of the year. I think you'll come up, you'll drop again and go up. The question is, is that the low? I, I, and I think I've said very clearly here, it just might be. The fact that you washed out the stops under the June low in most of the indices and caught nothing from it. And now they're talking about possibly when they're going to reverse or lower the amount of interest rate hikes. I don't know which. I said it very carefully. Reverse or slow down the pace of interest rate hikes. Well, that could help that market. But we haven't gotten through earnings. We haven't gotten through CPI and jobs report. It's a correction. Could it carry to the 3911 uh, zone? It could, the 18-week average. When we look at the chart action off a bar chart, you come in and you've still got a clear pattern, lower highs, lower lows. Other than throwing a dart at the chart and saying, that's the bottom, I'm going to buy it, I 
It's a chartist. I don't see that. What did the market hold? Well, I'm on record. Go. All these videos are up on YouTube. I said you got the first challenge here of the 200 week average of closes. Traders look at that. 200 week average is a four year average. Four year average gets people's attention. So the market is making a battle against that. And when you combine it with the Bollinger Band, the two together, okay, looking back, it was a good call to say, that's where I think the pros were coming out. I never said they're going long. They might, I never said that. When I look at the slow stochastics with everything uh, with it, you can see how the market lost its downside momentum trying to turn up. That tells me there's room here for short covering to carry the market higher, but I am not yet in the camp that is able to just say, oh, we have bottomed. It certainly looks interesting that you found support. That's very different than saying we have bottomed. In the Dow, it's the same thing. You got down to the 200 week average, the lower Bollinger Band, and I don't think you disagree. You fought battles every week, and this is the first time you're jumping away from the 200 week average into the 18 week. Now to really say to this market, oh, I've got something here that's going to be important. You gotta get up and over this high. What is that, 32,660? Let's call it 32,668. That would be impressive. That's a pretty far away from here. It's uh, from where you're at now, what, 130 points? Okay, it can happen, but that's what you'd have to go up to do it in, in addition to tonight's gain of uh, 222 for the week so far. When we take a look at the NASDAQ, I can argue, same thing, got to the 200 week average, trend down, momentum had been down and now it's coming out to the right-hand side and trying to perk up, more short covering, but I still see 12,000 as the resistance zone. Remember the soft weekly charts, daily charts that look a little bit like resistance, you're right into it. And in the Russell, you have a pretty strong combination of resistance. It comes in at 1796 and a half to 1805. So we have reasons when we hit the 200 week average to no longer be short. Now you're getting the rally. I have an open mind. Am I gonna look to be short? Or am I gonna look back at this rally and say the market bottomed? I don't know which I'm going to do. That's a nice position to be in because my traders are out. My subscribers, that's what they'd be hearing from me. Not a time to be pressing it. So we move over to the 30-year bonds. All it's doing is moving to the right-hand side of the Bollinger Band. Now, I looked at the BND and the TLT. It's just week after week of staying under the Bollinger Band. You had a couple of those and then you move to the right hand side. But if we take a look here, you can't count this week because we don't know where the week's gonna finish out. So we look, one week under the band, two. On this week, you finish at 125.17 under the band, that's three in a row, four in a row, five in a row, right there, six, and now you're moving to the right hand side. Five is the most you typically see. So it's stretched out. Can I see a, a rally now in front of the November 2nd FOMC meeting? Yes. If you're a subscriber of mine and you get my written updates, it's just the pattern I said. I wrote a week ago, not that I'm right or wrong on this. I said, what we'll look at now is the earnings. I never thought in the letters that I wrote during the week up until this weekend that we were gonna be discussing the Fed going to discuss in a big way, how are they going to start stalling, what's gonna be the parameters, blah, blah, blah. That I didn't see, but I expected earnings to give the market a bit of a boost up until now, and then I looked for them to start rolling back as the market got nervous about interest rates again. I haven't changed my opinion. So I can see how the market bounces, but you have an embedded reading. You're waiting for a hard rally to sell into. Now, if the red line closes over 21, I don't want to be short anymore. Not until that occurs. 10 year notes, same thing. Bounce, please bounce. I think it's a short sale still. Show me when it'll end. Slowing down interest rate hikes, folks, isn't stopping higher interest rates. It's, it's lost on me as to why people get crazy with it. Now the dollar, a problem. Let's go to it and see why it's a problem. And let's go back right here. You agree? We have an embedded reading. This is so darn important. This is, by the way, October 
14th. This is October 7th. Now let's come the other way. Just want you to see the numbers are over that. What did you do this past Friday? You lost the embedded reading. So on the close on Friday, the way I teach embedded slow stochastics with Bollinger Bands, you're finally out of a long position. You've been amassing, getting in, getting out on a weekly basis and out completely out. If it reverses course and this market wants to close back over 81, I'm interested in long side again. It's got to be this week. If it's not this week, nah, then I got to let it rebuild itself and see what it wants to do. So I'm patient as can be. I'm just waiting. You reopened. You're still losing that reading. I'm comfortable. Euro currency. Okay. Looks to me like you lost your embedded reading. When did we lose that? Let's just see. Okay, come with me right here. Numbers are under 20. Here you lose the reading. 23.7. It's not over 21. So to me, that wasn't the spot. The spot was just this week. Now I've got a reading that is definitively over the 20 level, 21 level. And when we reopened, it's even higher and worse. Therefore, for the way I look at it, on Friday afternoon, it was time to walk away from short positions in the euro and go to the sidelines. Canadian dollar, still bearish. Are you going to lose the embedded reading? You haven't yet. So on this rally, I think the pros have been selling. I think they'll be out if you get a reading over 21 by Friday. Now, you can look at it during the week, of course. You get up to 27, 28. It's hard to get back under 21, but you're not there. So I think the pros are still on the bear side of this market. In the end, you had intervention. Please understand that intervention is not a policy change. It's a selling opportunity, in my opinion. All intervention does is slow down an existing trend and say, uh, be careful if you sell into the hole in a falling market. That's all it is. Now, if the bank wants to surprise us and say, no, inflation at 3% proves we can now get away from our ultra easy money policy, I don't want to be short anymore. I haven't heard that once. I have heard them reiterate the ultra easy money policy staying in, but the yen under 150, you're pushing it too far. We can step in and change or alter the tide of that for a while. So they throw money at it and you get a bounce. Big deal. Haven't changed the policy. By the way, it, it looks as though Boris Johnson is not going to run to be a uh, prime minister again. He's there. I, I don't think he has the votes, but he'll say he'll do it for the good of the party. Uh, President Trump, watch that because I'm sure you were happy he was going to run and if he got in, you'd be excited. Now you got to be very concerned. Lower highs, lower lows, still embedded. I, I realize everybody's talking. They like that the volatility has come out. Now here's, here's an interesting part that I just read. As you know, Bitcoin had for a long time tied its fortunes to the NASDAQ. You'd watch what one did, you saw the other. But then it stopped everything and it just started getting very narrow. I read a correlation study where it's back to gold, 0.5. We'll see if that means anything, but the correlation has moved back to watching the gold market. We'll see if that is in fact the case. When I look at uh, Brent versus WTI crude, you would come down, challenge the lows here, come back up, nothing looking bearish to me there. But on the weekly chart, it does. This is the difference of WTI versus Brent. That's what that part is. Here you're still unable to get over and stay over the 18-week average. So the bias is down. Are we trending? No. You have a lower and low, higher high with resistance at the 18-week, and the market is fighting. It lost its embedded reading. That often leads to price and the 18-week average coming together. However, what's happened is it's been weeks now since it lost that. And that means that each week that goes by, the slope of the 18 week is coming down. Your resistance is going to be at a lower point. That's what in essence means. I'm wrong that they'll come together. If you first take out the most recent low, I don't see that happening anytime soon. WTI did the same thing, but it went to the 18 week. Did it like that. So it hit its upside target. These markets are looking for the next direction. I don't see it yet. 
In gasoline, the market is holding the 100-week average of closes. It lost its embedded reading back here. Theoretically, it should still get to the 18-week average. Uh, I'm wrong if the most recent low is taken out. Otherwise, I'm looking for that number on the upside. So you put it together. You try to come up with a game plan. These are the late-day comers coming into the market, as I call it. They're, these are the people, oh, over the weekend, they're looking at it. They go, and I think I want in. In the metal markets, you're still feeling the pressure of the dollar falling, and you understand that. In the pound, uh, Mr. Johnson not running is good. Now, will Mr. S S Suniak, will he get enough votes to make it on the vote tomorrow? And then they don't have to go to a Friday vote. I think he needs 100 votes and no other candidate get that. I don't know what getting Boris Johnson out of it does. I'm not an expert in that. It's, it sounds so confusing to me, but I'm sure to those in the know it's not. What isn't confusing to me is we keep talking Bollinger Bands and momentum turning. And for those of you that don't get it, I have a course. It's inexpensive. It's 13 chapters. You see what I do, you do the same thing. The charting software we give you, which will have also live data with it, will go back to the time frame when I recorded the videos. You see what I do, you keep up with it. Then in the mornings and over the weekend, I produce subscriber videos where I review all this in current charts. Yes, there's a fee for that after your course, after if you wanna stay with it. You don't have to stay with it, but if you do, 20 some odd dollars a month, get both the ETFs and the, uh, and the futures, not very expensive, believe me. I think it's $28 a month. Not expensive at all. How much you're spending on your Starbucks each month. But I'm not through it because you will get my charting software and you'll be able to work with that during the course. Well, that in itself is a $60 value. You take what I've just given you with the two, the course is 90, I'm giving you 60 back in the values. Not bad. 13 chapters. How do you find out more about it? Watch this. Welcome. I'm I. Rapstein and I'm here to talk about my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Now, many of you have taken my regular charting course, and if not, you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know, Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. And on a chart, it will offer on the top part resistance, on the bottom support, and the idea is the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches onto that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that I do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.